Secretary General, we are meeting exactly one year after Russia invaded Ukraine. How did this year change the North Atlantic Alliance? It has proven the importance of uh, NATO, of uh, North America and uh, Europe uh, standing together. It has also proven how important it has been that we, uh, since 2014, because this war didn't start last year, it started actually in 2014 with the illegal annexation of Crimea and, uh, and Russia going into eastern Donbass, that since 2014, NATO allies have implemented the biggest reinforcement of collective defence uh, in a generation with uh, 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 more troops uh, for the first time in our history, combat troops in the eastern part of the alliance, uh, higher readiness, and also that all allies have uh, increased defence spending since 2014 after years of cutting defence budgets. And altogether, uh, this uh, uh, put us in a position where we could support Ukraine, but also uh, uh, protect every inch of NATO territory and send a clear message to Moscow that we are there to defend uh, all NATO allies. You've mentioned protecting Ukraine. Poland was the country that pushed allies to send um, tanks, patriots, leopards. Uh, if you were to describe uh, Poland's decisions, activities during this year, which words would you choose? I will commend Poland for uh, being uh, a key ally and and uh, and being a lead ally in providing uh, support to uh, to Ukraine. Um, both when you uh, look at the quantity, but also the, the advanced systems that uh, Poland has has provided, and, and and driving some of the processes in the alliance and, and among partners, to also provide uh, more heavy systems like uh, not least the, the battle tanks. But the good thing is that NATO allies are united. We consult, we discuss, we have processes uh, among allies, but also in the US-led uh, Rammstein group that brings together uh, many countries um, uh, and which is coordinating uh, the effort of providing support to, to Ukraine. And, and, uh, and uh, this is extremely important because we could not allow President Putin to win in Ukraine. Uh, that will send a message to him and all other authoritarian leaders that when they use force, they get what they want. Uh, that will be a tragedy for the Ukrainians, but also dangerous for all of us, uh, because uh, it, will, it will make us more vulnerable. The Poles have heard on many occasions um, that <coughs> Article 5 is rock solid. You've mentioned it being in Warsaw, President Biden as well. But probably the Poles will feel safer if there are more NATO troops on the eastern flank, on the Polish soil. I know that you've mentioned it after the Russia's invasion, the NATO has enhanced its presence. 40,000 troops are under NATO command on the eastern flank. But the question is, when will the multinational battle groups be enhanced from the battalions up to brigade size, which was agreed in Madrid? First of all, we have already significantly increased our presence, both within the NATO framework, but also bilateral uh, presence. The United States has, for instance, thousands of, of troops uh, uh, in, uh, in Poland. Um, and, uh, and we have also other allies uh, uh, that have increased their presence in the eastern part of the alliance. Uh, second, what we agreed um, in the Madrid summit was to make the battle groups scalable to brigade levels, meaning that we should have dedicated troops that will train, uh, uh, work together with uh, uh, with uh, the home nation troops, in this case the Polish uh, troops and forces, um, preposition some supplies or, or equipment, uh, and then uh, to to be quickly deployed if needed, uh, uh, if something happens, or the tensions and the risks or the threats are increasing. So we have already increased. Uh, we have uh, uh, the land forces also backed by significant air and naval forces. Uh, I have visited uh, a U.S. carrier group uh, in actually the Adriatic Sea, but they were flying all the way up to the Baltic uh, Sea and patrolling the, uh, the sky. So these are huge capabilities, um, big capabilities. Uh, and then, uh, of course, this is also about increasing the readiness of troops. We have increased readiness. We are working on further increasing a large number of troops so we can quickly reinforce. So it is the combination of land, sea and air. It's about forward presence, but also forward deployed uh, uh, ammunition, uh, stockpiles, equipment. And then uh, the high readiness forces at different uh, levels that can be uh, quickly sent in if needed. Altogether, this is credible deterrence and offence. And before the summit in Vilnius, 
can we expect anything more visible? Because I assume yeah. you're mentioning that the talks are ongoing and the preparations are ongoing as well. Well, of course, uh, the decision has not been taken. We are now consulting, as we always do in NATO, to make decisions because we make them together as, as, as 30 allies. But what I expect is that at the Vilnius summit we will agree new plans that will further strengthen our ability to, uh, to protect uh, uh, NATO territory. We will uh, uh, agree um, what we call a new force model, but to, to, to ramp up and, and, uh, and to also increase uh, especially the readiness uh, uh, and, and also uh, address issues like, for instance, more air defense, uh, more long-range fires, uh, and, and many of all the things that we have seen in the war in Ukraine that are critical. Uh, and, uh, and, and also that uh, I expect that uh, when leaders meet in, in, in Vilnius that they also will agree uh, to in, uh, increase uh, the, the defense spending even more and not regard the 2% guideline, 2% of GDP for defense as a, as, as a ceiling we should move towards, but, but more as a floor, uh, a minimum. And altogether, again, this will further strengthen our uh, collective defense, our deterrence and, uh, and defense. I know that this question you've heard several times, but are the NATO permanent bases on the table, on the eastern flank? Uh, well, we have increased our presence. We have the battle groups. Uh, we have rotational presence. Uh, we have bilateral presence. We, we, we have doubled the number of battle groups from four to eight. Uh, and we have uh, make, uh, and we're making them scalable. So with, with the, the command elements as a more pre-positioned equipment, dedicated forces so, so so they can very quickly be scaled up from battle groups to to to, to brigades uh, so so this is what matters that we have more nato presence on land uh, at sea and in the air and on ukraine ukraine is asking for uh, fighter jets i know that for the time being f16 is not an option but how about mix do you envisage any decision among allies on this sending mix to ukraine so, uh, allies are constantly uh, consulting on these issues. Uh, allies are also providing different types of uh, support, fuel, uh, spare parts and so on. Uh, 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 and of course we will also consult on any new uh, uh, systems. Uh, but I think it is important to remember two things. We have all of the delivered uh, and provided extremely uh, uh, advanced and heavy uh, uh, weapon systems, including and now uh, armor, uh, infantry fighting vehicles, uh, modern battle tanks, but also more older ones, uh, uh, Soviet Union type, uh, and all helps. Um, uh, advanced air defense systems, including the Patriot batteries, uh, and then uh, more and more artillery and also long range fi uh, fires or the HIMARS. So, so, so altogether this is significant. It is important to continue to discuss New, new systems, uh, what new types of weapons that we should provide to Ukraine. But as important, or perhaps even more important, is to ensure that all the weapons, all the systems which are there, which consume thousands of uh, shells uh, and ammunition every day, uh, uh, and uh, need an enormous amount of uh, sustainment of, uh, of ma maintenance, get the ammunition, get the spare parts, get the maintenance sustainment. They need to operate as they should. So, so, so this is a uh, this is a war of attrition, uh, and and a war of attrition is a battle of lo logistics, and we need to ramp up our own production because the, the current rate of consumption of uh, artillery shells by the Ukrainians is higher than our production, uh, meaning that so far we have depleted our stocks. That's not a sustainable uh, path. Uh, so uh, the only sustainable path is for us to ensure that we ramp up production. That's also why we are engaged within industry. So, yes, I, I recognize that new, the discussions about new systems uh, uh, remains important, but we should never, never forget the importance of making sure that all the weapons which are all there should work as they should. That's the only way for uh, Ukraine to regain the territory and liberate the lands. And the last question, if I may, on Moldova. What should they to do with the country threatened by the Russian imperial policy? Moldova is a partner of uh, NATO. We, we have uh, decided to increase and to step up our support and, and the partnership activities, uh, helping them with reforms and all their efforts to strengthen their uh, defense and security institutions. 
um, but what we see in Moldova is is that is that uh, uh, the war in Ukraine has ramifications also for all the neighbors. We are concerned, and uh, and uh, and we are monitoring very closely what Russia does. Uh, I will commend the leadership, the political leadership of Moldova, that they 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 they, they demonstrate bravery and they and and a, and a commitment to democracy and freedom, which is extremely uh, impressive and something I. I, I, I honor you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary General, for this interview. Thanks so much for having me.